Hey there, Arconiacs. We got what could be some leaks for episode titles for season 3 of Only Murders in the Building. And like season 2's leaked episode titles, we're going to go over them and see if we can figure out what they could mean. These have not shown up anywhere that we're able to verify, but it's fun to try and figure out what's going on. And we're just going to try and create a possible synopsis for some of these episodes and hopefully get an overall shot of what's going on. Episode 1. The show must. The show must seems to be a clear reference to the phrase, the show must go on, and if we're taking it for face value, that would mean continuing the show, likely the stage show that Ben Glenroy dies in on the opening night. Maybe there is an understudy that will be tasked with coming up and replacing Ben, and if there is, I think it's likely he would be poised to be a suspect, but it's very unlikely that he's guilty. I also think that the show must go on as a reference to the Only Murders in the Building podcast. Like the hit series itself has a new season, our main characters will state to each other that the show must go on and they must create a new season of their podcast. Episode 2. The Beat Goes On. The Beat Goes On is another music based episode title. It generally means that the beat or life itself will continue on no matter what happens around us. Many musicians have had songs or albums titled The Beat Goes On including Madonna and The Whispers and even Sonny and Cher. And I think that the latter would be a great addition to the soundtrack of the episode. This could also go in line with the episode 1 title, the show, and The Beat Goes On. It could further solidify that someone is having a hard time with Ben's death and it's hard for them to keep moving on, maybe being seen in a sad emotional state. I think that if this is the case, it's most likely Mabel and I feel like she and Ben had some sort of relationship between the two and she's having a hard time overcoming his death. Episode 3. Grab Your Hankies Grab your hankies is an old school saying that tells someone to grab their handkerchief as it will be needed to wipe away tears. It means that something sad or something emotional in general will happen or be seen. And as this is the episode 3 title of the series, I think it will likely be in line with the two previous seasons, third episodes, such as Who is Tim Kono and The Last Day of Bunny Folger. This episode will likely give us the biggest insight to who Ben Glenroy is and make us see him as a sympathetic character. I believe that before this moment he may be framed as an arrogant person or maybe even a doofus, but before this point it's going to be similar to how I felt about Bunny after we saw her in the last hours before she died. Episode 4 The White Room when I hear The White Room, I think about the song by the same name by the band Cream. It's a depressing song that deals with someone who is feeling very isolated and dealing with relationship and social issues alongside substance abuse. It could also refer to a room that is temperature and pressure controlled. It, these type of rooms are usually heavily filtered to remove all contaminants so that you can sterilely clean or work on something. I like to think that it's comparative to a green room, an area that cast members can lounge and hang out before or after a show. Maybe the green room is being checked for clues and the trio is trying to make it so it's not contaminated, a safe sterile space to go over some items. Episode 5 I Love Ah, love. I feel as if this is a generally relaxed exclamation about being in love or a call to one's love. As this happens to be in the middle of the season, I'm going to suggest that we will learn about an intimate relationship that someone has had in the past. And this is likely a red herring though it doesn't have anything to do with the actual murder. It could be some relationship that Meryl Streep had in the past, maybe a relationship of Ben's from the past, but either way, whatever it is, I don't think it's pertinent to the actual killer. Episode 6. Ghost Light a ghost light is usually a single bulb or light placed on a stage whenever the theater is dark and not in use. It's said that the original function 
was to chase away spirits, but more than likely it was used just to relieve pressure in old gaslight systems. Today, it is commonly used to keep a light in the theater after the show or work for the day is finished. This single light stops accidents such as people falling into the orchestra pit or tripping over something. I think that this will be a very spooky episode, something along the lines of Lucy walking through the dark or catacombs during the blackout where people are sneaking around and the murderer will be present and probably just seen by the silhouette in front of the ghost light. Episode 7, Cobro. Cobro is the seventh episode of the season and the last one that is leaked. I do believe that there will still be 10 episodes, though episode 7 hasn't told us any pertinent information in the last two seasons of who the killer was. I still do think that we'll get some good information and the seventh episode has been among my favorites from the past seasons. Season 1, The Boy from 6B, where we learned about the demon's black market dealings and who killed Zoe and actually how how it happened. In season 2, we had Flipping the Pieces, another Theo heavy episode where he brings Mabel back to his home after that incident with the glitter guy on the train and they head to Coney Island. We learn about their respective pasts and who and why they are who they are at this point in their lives. It was really great episodes. I'm hoping that this one is also Theo heavy. I'm thinking that it will more than likely be Mr. Morris heavy. Cobro, I feel, will likely be similar to an emotional and stylized episode full of world building. I initially thought that Cobra might have been a misprint, a mistake, or misspelling from Cobra because we do know that the Cobra iconography will play a big part in season three. But after looking further, I found that Cobro is Spanish for collect money or depending on its use it could be used as receive payment or even demand debt cobra as a verb in spanish can also mean to receive money so there is a link between this cobro and cobra maybe there is some miscommunication about what word is being said where someone thinks one or the other and not really understanding what's going on i do believe that someone does owe someone else a large amount of money and that meryl streep is one of these people and that someone is coming to collect that debt but anything is possible. What do you guys think of these titles? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.